Painting figures has never been a strong point of mine due to the fact that I hate painting skin. Today I'm looking to improve my figure painting skills by painting this Ratnik Mentress Tank Crewman. Hey guys, I'm Jake Richards and I'll be guiding you on this winding two-part tutorial of painting this figure by Radic Miniatures. In part one, I'll be primarily working on the skin of the model as well as the uniform and belt parts. First up are the basic steps of cleaning, washing, and priming the model. I start by cleaning the model up with my scraper tool and sponges, being sure to remove any mold lines or any imperfections. From there, I wash the model in some hot, soapy water. While the model dries, I then negotiate with my son to get my airbrush back. As a forward to this tutorial, I highly recommend checking out Julian Connie's great article about painting a Rama bus with the use of oils. The article is located for your viewing and reading pleasure on the Michigan Toy Soldier blog. The general process is basically just creating the skin's foundation with acrylic colors and then following up with oils to stain and add contrast to different features of the skin. Again, I highly recommend reading this article. The skin starts with the buildup of acrylic skin tones over a black base coat. I start with a pale flesh tone and then follow up with a deeper, warmer tone shot from the bottom upwards to create contrast. Once the tones of the skin are in place, it's time to get a bit messy. I make a slurry out of oil paints using various tones present in human skin. At this point, the oil's job is to stain the paint and add contrast to the model. After the sludgy mixture has had some time to dry for roughly 5-10 to 10 minutes, I clean the surface lightly with a makeup sponge. I'm careful not to add too much pressure, but just enough pressure to clean the upper surfaces of the model. If it's too clumpy, I'll take a brush and then spread the clumps and then add another pass with the sponge to even it all out. Once the model has been cleaned up, I go about creating a range of tones to create my skin's highlights. I won't go into drastic detail about the ratios as I generally go more by feel. When in doubt, I slap some paint on and just see how it goes and make adjustments accordingly. With my highlight tones created, I take two brushes, one wet for the application of the oils and one dry used for the blending. I apply the paint in thin dots around the model for places where my highlights will begin. It looks dark at the moment, but I'll fix it. I then follow up with my dryer brush and begin the process of stipple blending the oils. It's not really something I can explain in words, but it's pretty straightforward just by feel. I recommend you try it out yourself. If you remove too much oil in this process, you can always add more and then repeat the process as many times as needed. After the highlight colors are in place, I do the exact same process all over again but using the shadow colors. But I make a point of staying away from my highlights that I took so long to establish.
Once I'm done creating my shadows, I go about redoing many of the highlights if need be. I then let the model sit for several days allowing the oil to cure. Then I apply a clear coat to preserve my work before moving on to adding VMS's liquid mask to protect the skin prior to working on the uniform of the model. Once the mask is in place, I re-prime the model to begin the process of painting the black uniform. To create some variety in the black uniform, I add several different colors of varying hues. This is done to add a bit of interest and variety to the black uniform which would otherwise appear to be very dull. As I use lighter colors, I make sure to spray the model at a steeper angle to create my highlights. After I'm done using the airbrush to create the general overall tones of the uniform, I begin the satisfying process of removing the liquid mask with some tools. After I've removed the liquid mask, I start the process of painting the leather bits with my brush. I work with a wide range of warm browns going from darkest to lightest creating a variety of tones. My goal was to create the look of well-worn leather. To create the look of wear and tear on the leather, I use different stippling strokes to create a subtle texture. With the leather bits completed, that wraps up part one of this tutorial. Be sure to check out part two in the future. Until next time, have a great one.